doing it. I'm doing it. Hi. My name's Tom. And if you're listening to this, then you are a subscriber or a potential subscriber of the first ever Tom's Brain podcast. And i tell you why I did this right now. Because I've got the whole house to myself. And... I can't open up and talk with the thought that even another person in real life might be able to hear me. Now, hold on. I know what he's saying there. Because if I'm so neurotic that I can't talk whilst other people in my family might listen in and overhear me then how do I expect to upload this and let everybody hear it well that's just one of those things like once it's out there it's out there and I don't have to worry about the thing that I might be worrying about which which is what what is that what is the thing that I'm worried about I'm, I'm worried about being judged aren't, aren't we all worried about being judged I obviously it it's hard to describe which should actually be the title of this podcast because there are going to be instances where I'm stuck for words But it's hard to describe. I'm gonna hold on. I need I need somebody to look at. Okay. It's quite menacing, but it'll do. Okay, so I've got a face, I've got eyes, I've got a nose, I've got a mouth. I'm looking at you. And I'm talking to you. So I'm actually visualising a person. I'm going to see if this works. Like, if you put something out into the universe... I'm a firm believer that if you put something out into the universe, then it will happen. So I am putting this podcast out into the universe. And by doing so, the benefits will I don't know how to explain it. Okay, so I had to go back and listen to what I was talking about because I drew a blank. And it was a good thing I did because I realised that I am terrible at this. I am not a conversationalist. I am only just getting into the idea that I need to stop talking like a robot, which is what I am currently doing, and you can hear it now, when I talk like this, with gaps in between my syllables. And I think that also comes from the fact that I'm a songwriter. So, song with songwriting is not is different to poetry. It, the, the, you'd think they were the same thing, but with poetry, um, you've got a rhythm to it. <laughs> But anyone can create that rhythm. Like, I mean, you you, you want to think of a pop culture um, relevance. William Shatner does the kind of thing that I'm talking about. He can take something that somebody's written and say it in a nuanced way that completely changes it. And that's what poetry is. But a song has a specific rhythm and tempo and melody and i'm used to that and forming sentences that are kind of rhythmic and paced and melodic 
and everything's broken up into syllables. And once you realize that in pop music, it will kind of ruin it forever. Like, people will break up their syllables in pop music, and it's so weird. Like, they will, like, you just think about it, like, that they will stretch part of a word for longer than it should be, and then say the rest of the word really quickly. And that is what I do in real life. And I need to get out of that habit because it makes me sound like a robot that is buffering. And if you don't know what buffering is, buffering is the time that it takes to load something before you can listen to it. Ha ha. I know technology. So I went back to listen to what I was saying and that was the fact that everybody is scared of being judged and obviously coming from my background that is something that I have had to deal with from a very young age and once you... I'm doing it again. Once you let that thought in that you are going to be judged, then it stays with you for the rest of your life. And I was lucky enough not to have any thoughts like that up until I was, I'd say, 17. I went through the first 16 years of my life in almost blissful ignorance. I was... I don't know if it's like this for everybody, but I feel like that was when I was at my most happiest and at my most creative and at my most carefree. And I guess it is like that for everyone because we were all just children back then and we didn't have any aspect of the real world and in the real world you are judged as soon as you are met and that's kind of a scary thing for kids growing up these days is that the judgment comes so much sooner if they choose to put themselves out there on social media it's terrifying if you know my sister has two sons I have nephews and it it's so crazy to think that they are growing up in an age where privacy and development is hinged on other people whereas when I grew up Oh my god, I sound like an ancient. I'm only 28 when I grew up. <laughs> when I grew up, I want to be famous, I want to be a star, I want to be in movies. Basically, I had this time to get to know myself without any other input. And a lot of that was down to the fact that I s spent a lot of time indoors, and I'll, I'm uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to edit now. See, this is another thing. I am an editor, and so another reason why I talk in broken sentences is because I think that when I go back and listen to this, I will be able to snip out the breaks of silence and cut together and move things around and that is just how my brain works curse it curse it to death it's one beautiful mind but it's neurotic as i was saying everyone has the fear that they will be judged and that fear is sometimes all consuming and it prevents i'm i'm talking to you but i'm gonna 
talk as to, as it, about how the fear has uh, taken a hold of me. I, this really does sound like a Lily Allen song. Okay. Um, by the way, I made a DIY microphone stand using an upside down Arc de Triomphe. I just let you know that. And I'm lying in bed. I'm fe I want to feel safe and cocooned and free to express myself like a Gilmore girl. Stop it with the pop culture references. Okay. I was saying about being judged. Everyone has a fear that they are going to be judged. Because it is true. But what you need to do, what I need to do, is not let that fear be all-consuming. What I need to do is force myself into situations where I have to think before I can... Well, no, where I have to act before I can think. Because if I have time to think, all my thoughts will be consumed by the fear. If I have to act, then natural events will occur and the fear won't be let in. That sounded really broken up, didn't it, children? So I learnt from an early age that you are judged and for the first 16 years of my life I had a fuck it attitude and it wasn't until you start to develop sexually that you realize that is the time when judging is becoming important because other people are judging you to be like uh, you've got this inherent need as a human being to find a partner and that is just in our DNA from the very building blocks of the universe that one must find one and become two that is the meaning of life it is true I know it's you think hold on this is a this is a question that has plagued mankind for eons and you're just coming out here and saying that that is the meaning of life well it's true because it's the building blocks it's the foundation one plus one equals two and two and that is that is that is creation and that is what we are all striving for and so once you realize that you need that plus one it becomes all consuming and you realize that the the plus ones all the plus ones that you think that are out there they are judging you and thinking of you as plus ones and and then they probably don't think that you are a plus one i'm going to i'm going to talk myself into a nosebleed here <laughs> Um, so once I realized that that kind of basis of creation existed, that was when the fear kicked in and I got really quiet and unsociable and even to a point of being scared to go outside and I think and i say thankfully but it's also kind of it works against you that the fact that you can socialize online and between the ages of 16 maybe 15 uh, upwards i start to do that i started to you know i left high school i left that social situation where you are forced to interact with people every day and all my interaction was done online and it reached a point where it was damaging my 
real real life because you know you can't be online forever god bless the time when we finally can upload ourselves to a computer johnny depp style and make a terrible movie that stars the lovely morgan freeman but still terrible um isn't he just like the most charming actor ever he and he's got such He's in everything. Morgan Freeman and Julianne Moore, they are just in all the good films. Sorry. That was just a tangent that I needed to go on. They were in a film together, weren't they? It was about that... I want to say they were in a film together, but... Never like... Not, not one that stands out. Oh, don't go on a tangent, then you'll forget what you were talking about. What I was talking about was the fact that I felt and that my online socialising had damaged interacting in real life. I was becoming snappy with my family. And they're the people who you're supposed to feel that will love you no matter what. And, and you know, I'm lucky enough to have that kind of family. But if you don't have that, then you need, you need somebody and you'll go find that in another person, in another group of people where you can feel acceptance. And I felt like I had no acceptance. And I still struggle with that feeling today, that feeling of alienation, that feeling that I am the only one who really understands what's going on and nobody can ever comprehend what I am going through. So why the hell should I expect that I will be able to find one other person in, in this universe who will love me unconditionally. I am scared of that. I am petrified. So it takes all of that to admit all of that just to build up the courage to say that and then say, well, let's put love aside for the moment. Let's just get back to being able to interact with other people and so it reached a point where I had to force myself to go out on my own and put myself in situations where I could act before I could think and I still do that to this day and those are some of the most exhilarating freeing satisfying situations and if you take away anything from this first episode, it is that you have to do that. You have to, what is this saying? D don't look before you leap. No, I think the saying is look before you leap. But I am telling, that is, that is your brain telling you to look before you, before you leap. I am telling you to do not look before you leap. Fight every urge in your body to look before you leap because the times that you shut your eyes and just let the moment take you are the times when everything falls into place magically like this instance recording this everything just fell into place for today for, well, for this month actually I've been building up to it and it all accumulated to a, a, a very terrible few nights of insomnia. I've, I've always suffered from irregular sleeping patterns due to my a aversion to sunlight. So much so that back when I was a child, I didn't know what insomnia was. 
but I wrote a song about it, and it wasn't a melodic. It was. It had a lovely melodic chorus, and the chorus went insomnia, insomnia, uh, <laughs> and I wrote this when I was about eleven years old, maybe twelve. I had just started high school, and I, I'd been writing a f few dozen songs before that, but this is when I got into my real creative, alternative stride, writing songs about my feelings of, obviously this feeling was insomnia, and so the the song was kind of, it, it, God help me, it was a rap. And yes, I I, I, I memorise, I know my songs, I know my own songs, so I'm going to share with you this song that I wrote when I was 12 about insomnia. And the opening verse goes... Oh great, now when it comes to the point where I'm supposed to be opening up and telling you how talented I am, I freeze. Oh my god, that's just like on the X Factor when those stupid people get to the judges' houses and just freeze. That is me, and I know this thing. I've known this thing since I was 11, but when it comes down to it, I have frozen. Because why? Because I'm thinking about it too much. I'm thinking I'm letting the fear get to me. The fear. So the first verse, if I can just keep on talking and keep the momentum going, the first verse should go. It's come to me. Okay, so here we go. No, it's gone again. This, the, I may have to break again. Because obviously this is going to be very frustrating to listen to. Okay, now I've thought of it. All I just needed was those few seconds to stop letting the fear in and think about it. So this is the first verse, the opening verse of a song I wrote when I was 11 called Insomnia. And it was, I'm going to, I'm going to speak it because it, what, that is how I wrote it. I'm going to, I'm going to, you will hear, why am I explaining? Stop being controlling, obsessive, just let it flow. Twenty-four hours in a hospital writing room. Got no sleep cause I'm sitting in a room doom. Waiting in a chair for the doctor to see me. Fingers crossed that he will not treat me. Doctor walks in the waiting room floor. Says you stupid git, you're on the wrong floor. I suddenly walk into a lift and suddenly get... I, w I get up and walk into a lift and suddenly feel a funny drift. I look down and I've got no clothes on, and all the people laugh as I walk on. Got no sleep, I ain't got no sleep. Got no sleep, I ain't got no sleep. Got no sleep, I ain't got no sleep. Insomnia, insomnia. So that was a very telling snapshot into my life sitting in a hospital waiting room waiting for the doctor to treat me and the doctor says that he can't treat me i wrote that when i was 11 years old i'm sorry but i'm just really proud of that and i hope you are too and if you're not then you are not the people that i want to listen to this and i'm, I'm sure that if you've reached this by now then you obviously are going to stick around God forbid you if you've just come this far and then you're going to think that was it, that was the tipping point <laughs> the, the moment he started singing ugh, 
No, 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 no way, no. <laughs> so the whole reason I was singing this song about insomnia, I had to go back and remind myself because I got carried away. That's okay, that's human, I am human. There's no reason why I can't. That I have to stop talking like a robot. So the reason I was talking about insomnia was the fact that everything this month had built up to a point where I was getting a terrible, terrible insomnia, and it it was it was making me depressed, and I was feeling that I wasn't human. I I I, I existed only in the twilight hours, and I slept all day. And I all 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 the interaction I had with other beings was my dog, and I love him to death, but that kind of attachment is damaging. And I learned that the hard way with the last dog I had, who I would so socialize with, interact with in the twilight hours and he was my best friend and he went and decided that he wanted to play in the middle of the road. I give you the best years of my life and you do this? Needless to say, he passed away. And so I'm, I'm very affected by that and I'm terrified of my new dog dying let's not get into that topic of discussion but I'm just gonna preface it by saying that that is the only instance of interaction I have if I don't force myself to act before I think just like this podcast this recording I acted before I thought. It took a while to get my brain woke up. I've been awake in bed for the past two hours. Half an hour of this I've been using to talk to the podcast. The half an hour bit before that I needed to wake up um, because I was trying to set up the recording equipment and it wasn't working and then I realized that my headphones were plugged into my iPhone and not my MacBook. So clearly I just needed that half an hour to wake up for being stupid. What was I saying? I was saying about the fact that all this insomnia was very damaging and I felt alien and depressed. So what I had to force myself to do was jump into situations before I could think. And the best way to do that is to just get out there. Just go to a place that you've never been before and experience it. Look at the people who are walking around you. And obviously to do that I had to get out of the insomnia because I'm not going to go out at 3am because the only people who are walking around are drug addicts. My mother in, 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 um, what's the word? That is my mother. That's the mother in, my mother. She does that to me. She says avoid, she's, avoid the shady characters, she, you know. If she, all she ever does is she lets the, the thoughts consume her and then she worries about me. She worries about my sister. She worries about everyone. She can't just relax and just let the flow happen. It, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not being, I'm not being judgmental. It takes a lot to let the wave carry you because you are everything in your body is telling you to fight to 
to fight back against the wave. But you, sometimes you just have to let it carry you. I'm speaking in real metaphors here. I sound like a pretentious twat. Sorry. So, the... Uh, so... I say so and like a lot. Hi, my name is Thomas McNabb. And I'm an Alcoholics Anonymous. I am not an Alcoholics Anonymous. I am a preposition anonymous. <laughs> that is exactly what I am. I need to find my people. Where are my people who use uh and like and so all the time? They haven't learned how to speak in proper sentences, so they have to like talk like this. Ah, oh, those are my people. Where are they? We need to form a group and get help. This is my help. This is my therapy. This is the talking, the talking to you, the talking that will enable me to have normal conversations. That's all I want. So I strived for this month to make a difference for the first time in over two years almost probably even longer than that i have just been going through a patch of existing and not and not existing you exist but you don't live and that is no life you have to do something. I, that's less pretentious. So, I... So... I let things fall into place naturally. And the natural events that occurred today are a, a result of what happened at the start of this month, which was, as I was saying, the bad insomnia and the feeling of alienation and depression and the need to interact with human beings in situations where I act before I think. So I joined a website called Meetup and you tick boxes for your interests and they tell you all the other people with interests like you who have joined groups and these groups have meetings and these meetings are cinema events bowling events coffee events and they're not necessarily at ridiculous sunlight hours of the day they're at, you know, 8pm Or times that are better than that What am I trying to say? I don't know, this is, when, I, when I get to the point when I, when I set the podcast up I said This is what you're going to talk about And it took me almost 45 minutes to get to the point Which is redundant because this is the when I'm supposed to be wrapping it up But hey ho here we are. When it gets to the point, I struggle to find the words. Because that is the, that is it. That is the brain. The brain thought tells you to think, tells you this is what you have to do. But what I did was press record and just start talking and let the moment take me. And so when it comes back around full circle and I have to actually talk about the thing that I said I was going to talk about, my brain explodes. So the website that I joined forced me into situations that were alien in a good way. Not alien in the way that I'd been feeling. Alienated. Yeah, I guess alienated is the opposite. No, that's not. Alienated is the feeling of being an alien because you are not interacting. So going into the situations and, and forcing yourself to interact without thinking lets things happen naturally.
not like this sentence, which is being structured like I am a speak and spell. <sighs> I'm losing the momentum, which is a good thing, but I'm getting to the point, the fucking point that I was supposed to be getting to, which was that everything fell into place. I'm repeating myself. How annoying. How annoying it must be for you. But bear with me. We will get there. We will reach a resolution. And if it doesn't happen, then we will reach one next week. Because as I said, everything that happened this month has built up to this very moment. And it took 16 days to get there. I'm just, I'm just, I'm starting with October 1st because it may have been before that, but there are a few things that I hold on to. Time may be meaningless, but days still need to have meaning. And the first of the month is always the most important. And I don't know why people say that January the 1st is the most important. It can be any first, and for me, it's usually September the 1st, but I spent September in a a lagging period from kind of, I guess, I, I spent a lot of, of my summer being a lot more active than I usually would, and I'll get into reasons for that another time, but I needed the September to kind of readjust and that's when I forced myself to start anew on October the first. But of course it didn't it didn't happen exactly that order. I needed to battle the insomnia. I needed to register to a website and fall into old habits in order to get new habits. It's very it's very convoluted but it works. It worked and it is working. So for the first meeting I went to was a cinema group and it I it it helped me for one instance because I love films. I'll be talking about that again soon. How much I love films. Oh haven't you already like realized that I love films by the fact that I'm went on a tangent about Julianne Moore and Morgan Freeman? I love films, and if I don't have a purpose to go see a film, then I will talk myself out of going. So by joining this group, it said, you need to be here at this time, because it may be that somebody saw that you were attending this event, and they are depending on meeting you. That and And... It just might be that one, that one person who doesn't even exist. But if you think about that, then it forces you to do that. So it forced me to go to the cinema to see a movie that I knew nothing about called Maps to the Stars. Which is another thing that's kind of about events taking place, letting the flow take you rather than trying to control everything, because once you try to control everything, you actually lose control. Very, that's what Julianne Moore, definitely. Go see that film, Maps to the Stars. So I turned up, and some, it turned out somebody did expect me to be there. The guy in charge who was running it said, oh, we were expecting you, and he was expecting me because he's the owner of the group, and he knew that I was a newcomer, and up until then, all I had thought was that I was going to be shunned and ignored and felt, feel unwelcome, but if that were to happen, at least I would get a movie out of it. But as it turns out, that didn't happen because that's n that would never happen. You would have to have the worst luck in the world to join a group who you 
think of cinema fans and for them all to reject you. What kind of atrocity would that... Uh, that didn't happen. I was accepted and welcome and I didn't feel judged and I felt safe. So safe, in fact, that I went to another cinema attending, attending event, attended another screening of a film called Gone Girl. Unfortunately, that film went on so long that I didn't get to socialise as much, but just the, the act of doing it again made me feel human. And so I went to a completely n new meetup, which was in a pub. We will have to get onto this topic another episode. Me in in accepted social situations is is a is a trying trying time. These are trying times. But let's just say the social situation went good because of the first two. And then this week, I joined an indie filmmakers group. And thanks to those first three meetings, at this one, I felt almost in charge. I felt like I was he heading the meeting. I felt like the input I had was so pertinent. <laughs> to everybody and that people actually cared because they did care and even if they didn't they don't matter the people that don't care don't matter the people that care matter and there was a person that cared and he walked with me all the way to the bus stop after the meeting and I I socialized with a stranger aren't you proud of me So I feel a little less alien than I did at the start of the month. It took a lot of work, but we finally got here. And I'm sure there were other things that I planned on saying, but I've been talking for 45 minutes now, and that is the maximum that I would let myself talk, because my throat is actually getting even more uh, death rally than it started out as. Can you hear that? I'm sorry if it sounds terrible. We're going to wrap things up now. And I'm going to have to think of a sign-off. The sign-off is... Thank you for listening. Oh my god, thank you for listening. Um, I, I want to thank my inspiration for this, Jen Kirkman, and obviously the people who introduced me to podcasts in the first place, Brian Safi and Aaron Gibson, and they are all American comedians who will never be caught dead listening to my podcast, but I just feel like the universe has put me in this place and I need to give back to the universe by thanking this, the people that I need to thank. Obviously, I should thank my mother and my father for giving birth to me. As fucked up as I am, I exist, and I am doing something about that existence. I am not just existing. I am living. And I am Thomas McNabb. And this has been Tom's Brain.